Oh no, I would like to go shopping, but I need some sort of device where I can come in and out of the house. How do I do that? I have it. It's a door. You can go in and out. But how do I use it? Alright, so last week's weekly design challenge was to sketch a door handle and since I haven't done industrial design -y stuff lately, I thought this would be a great opportunity to get back in the game a bit. First things first, a bit of warm up with some basic shapes. Whenever you want to sketch something new, make sure to break it down to its most basic elements. In this case, a whole bunch of blocks. You can notice that this might actually also give you some cool ideas for a future design you might come up with later. In this case, I actually stuck with a blocky futuristic style for the end product. Before that though, I did explore different shapes and styles. I also used some reference from good old Google just to see what sort of handles are out there. It is not wrong to copy one or two of the examples you are looking at to get warmed up and get those muscles used to the shapes you are going to draw. Keep in mind though that this is not a copying exercise. We want to come up with our own design so while it's okay to get inspired, always make sure that to iterate and ideate and only take elements from the design that you like, not the whole thing. And that is exactly what you can see here. Some of the sketches I'm doing here are iterations of existing products, trying to see in what exciting way I can change them. And that is exactly what you can see here. Some of these sketches I am doing here are iterations of existing products, trying to see in what exciting way I can change them. Now, you can notice that I did not start with the mechanism of the door handle, since that was not my goal. In this exercise I purely concentrated on the aesthetics. I did think of maybe doing a future version where you only have to touch a surface and the door will open and close accordingly, but that would have been a far less exciting sketch, so instead I decided to stay with a good old door handle. In one of the reference images I saw a design where a sheet metal was wrapped around the axis of the handle that goes through the door. I really liked this idea, so I started ideating on this a bit more. Personally, I like drawing in 3D because most of the times I think in 3D and drawing in 3D can be a problem-solving challenge that I truly enjoy. However, for quick iterations of uh, similar concepts, sometimes it can be very useful to just do the flat one side drawing of a product. This does not only help in speeding up the process and putting out more drawings, but it can also be easier to comprehend for the viewer. After I had enough sketches of ideas, I decided which one to go with. I copied the sketches on a separate layer and blew them up so the final drawing would be of higher resolution and quality. From here on, I went through my typical sketching process. If you saw any of my videos, you probably know by now how that works. Lower opacity of the initial sketch, make sure to keep your new lines crisp and clean, Use the tools available in the drawing app, in this case the ellipse and line tools from Sketchbook Pro, and watch out for those line weights. Applying different line weights can make a huge difference to your drawing. Thicker lines for outlines, uh, while thinner lines for the details. But at the same time, thicker lines can also be on the bottom part of the sketch, symbolizing shadow areas. From there I jumped into coloring. I filled in each part of the handle on a separate layer and switched to Photoshop for the ease of use of its lasso and gradient tools. Let me take a quick break and I'll come back with commentary later in the video where I'll focus a bit more on the rendering.
is the lighting. Because I wanted to evoke the feeling of high-grade metal, I added reflections and the feeling of shine. This can be done by contrasting elements. You can see on the handle that it goes in a nice gradation from light to darker bluish metallic look at the same time. You can see on the handle that it goes in a nice gradation from light to darker bluish metallic look. At the same time where we have changes in volume, we also have a harsher contrast between light and dark area. I also outlined the edges of the metal parts with a very light metallic blue-gray color, because at the edges is where the light hits the strongest. In the end, to add a bit of extra realism to the image, I copy pasted the screw head and adjusted to fit the perspective. Notice that I chose a dark grey screw so it fits with the high quality feeling of the metal that I was going for. And I also painted a bevel and emboss effect around the screw. As per usual, I like adding a bit of texture to my drawings and in this case I added a brushed sheet metal texture to the handle. I made sure to take a texture that fits the total image. For the final part I was trying different methods of uh, presentation, from contrasting with a complementary color to giving a hint of the surface of the door where the handle might be on. But in the end I decided to go with a good old trusted black border. But yeah, that was what I wanted to talk about in this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and leave me a comment, I love to read what your thoughts are on these processes. Also, consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. You can also follow me on Instagram for more drawing related stuff. But as always, I wish you a great day and see you folks next time. Bye bye!